In this experiment, we're going to prepare oxygen, we're going to test for oxygen, and then we're going to have a look to see at uh, some different substances that will burn and how well they burn in oxygen. So first of all, this is the apparatus that we use. On the left, we've got a conical flask, which has got a side arm and a delivery tube going down into a water trough. Uh, the water trough has in it uh, a beehive. You can see the tube going into the beehive there. Uh, and the beehive's got a hole in the top. Uh, and that's where we'll place one of these gas jars or a boiling tube in order to collect the, the oxygen. The reaction that goes on, goes on inside the conical flask here is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. So here's the hydrogen peroxide that we're going to be using. This is 30 volume, it's quite concentrated uh, hydrogen peroxide, so we're going to have to be a little bit careful when we do this experiment. Uh, and it decomposes naturally, so inside this bottle now it's decomposing, but it's a very slow reaction. So we're going to uh, speed that reaction up with the aid of a catalyst. And the catalyst that we're going to be using for this experiment, this is manganese for oxide. And we're going to put that in the bottom of the uh, conical flask uh, and then we will add the hydrogen peroxide through the thistle funnel at the top there and uh, we'll do it very carefully the first gas that's going to appear will be the air so it's going to be pushing air out of the uh, conical flask and air that might be in the delivery tube so we're not interested in the first gas that comes over but we will be interested in uh, the gas after that so let's, uh, let's get it set up and we'll come back in a second or two. I now place some uh, manganese 4 oxide in the conical flask there and I'll just replace the thistle funnel and you can see I've got a little extension on the thistle funnel because I need it to go down right to the bottom so that the gas uh, that's being produced, the oxygen that's being produced doesn't escape through the thistle funnel. Uh, I need it all to go down the side arm and then I can collect it. So now I'm going to start to add the uh, hydrogen peroxide. Okay, so this is the hydrogen peroxide that we're going to add. And just take the top off there and just pour a little through the thistle funnel. Uh, just a tiny amount to start with. And straight away we start to get some gas being produced you can see some bubbles coming through the through the beehive there you don't want it to be going too fast otherwise it will start to come out through the uh, thistle funnel and it's been running, running for a few seconds now you can see there's a bit of steam in there it does get quite hot in here and we've got a few bubbles of gas being produced. So I'm going to collect the first few bubbles just in a, a boiling tube. So I just uh, fill the boiling tube with water and then I put it through over the hole in the beehive and collect the gas. So you can see the gas is now displacing the water uh, and when that's full I'll test it. And we're going to be testing uh, for oxygen and the standard test for oxygen is to take a wooden splint we're going to light the splint and then we're going to blow it out so that it starts to glow and then we'll put the glowing splint into the oxygen so we'll just wait for it to fill up nearly full now we've just got a, a few more centimeters cubed of uh, gas to collect uh, once this one's collected once this tube's full uh, I'm just going to move it to one side and then I'll put a gas jar over so that we can collect some more of the gas in a gas jar so it's just about full now ready to change over this is a gas jar full of water i'm just going to put that in position on the beehive and slide it over so now the gas jar is beginning to fill up and i've got a tube that's now full of we hope oxygen to test for oxygen we're going to use a glowing splint so here's a wooden splint that's been lit and if I blow it out you can see that it glows it, it glows if I put it into oxygen it will relight so the glowing splint 
degree lights. So the test for oxygen, glowing splint, and it will relight. We now need to collect some more uh, of the oxygen, so I need to fill these up. I'm going to add a little more of the hydrogen peroxide and we'll fill up some more of these gas jars. So as I add the hydrogen peroxide, you can see reactions occurring. We get some bubbles being produced. And we'll gradually fill them up. When they're full, uh, we've got some glass covers here. And I'll just put the glass cover over the top and that will seal it so that the oxygen can't escape. So I'm going to fill up a few gas jars and then we'll have a look at some experiments of things burning in oxygen. The first gas jar now is just about full. So I'll get my next gas jar, the second gas jar, ready. And all I do is to raise it up, put it on top of the beehive and then slide it across. So that first gas jar is now full. Let's raise it, slip it over, and we can start to fill the second gas jar. This gas jar is still upside down. It's full of the, the gas that we've been collecting, which we hope is uh, oxygen. I'm going to put the glass slide over the top now, and that will seal it. And now we can leave that until we're ready to do the experiments with the burning. So we're just collecting some more oxygen in there and we'll come back in a moment. So another gas jar almost full of oxygen so we're going to get ready to uh, put another gas jar in its place. So here's another gas jar which is full of water. So just as we're it's nearly full we're just going to place the second gas jar on the beehive and then we just slip it across to collect the gas. I've got some gl glass covers here which I can put on top of the gas jar and that seals in the oxygen so the oxygen can't escape. So we're ready to for that one for another experiment and we're collecting some more oxygen there in the tube. Okay. Next element we're going to have a look at to see how it burns is sulphur. This is not a metal, this is a non-metal. Uh, so we're just going to burn some sulphur and then we're going to put it into the oxygen. So here it is in a deflagrating spoon. Uh, sulphur melts at just over 100 degrees Celsius. And you can see it melted now, it changes colour and then usually catches fire. Uh, it's actually boiling and it's burning now. But let's put it into the oxygen you can see when it burns in oxygen it burns with that blue flame the next metal we're going to have a look at is magnesium uh, we already know that magnesium burns with a very bright light in air what does magnesium look like when it burns in oxygen so in this gas jar I've got some oxygen, here's a nice big strip of magnesium, get it burning, burns really brightly, put it into the oxygen and it is extremely bright. So we're now going to burn uh, some sodium, so on the paper towel here I've got a small piece of sodium and we're going to place it into this deflagrating spoon and the deflagrating spoon we're then going to plunge into our oxygen. So the first thing I need to do is put the sodium into the deflagrating spoon. Use a pair of tweezers for that. And then I'm going to get the sodium hot. Sodium melts at about 98 degrees Celsius. So we should see it melt. And then as it's melted, uh, it, it may catch fire. And then we're going to plunge it into the oxygen to see what happens when it burns in oxygen as well. So let's first of all warm it up. And it begins to melt. 
we're going to get it quite hot. Now it's liquid. There might be a little bit of the oil in there that's just burning off. That I didn't manage to remove. This is now getting quite hot. We've got some molten sodium there. And it's just beginning to catch fire. You can see a little orange flame there. See the little orange flame? Let's put it into the oxygen. And when it goes into the oxygen, it burns much more brightly. That's sodium burning in oxygen. When sodium burns in oxygen, it will produce sodium oxide. So the smoke you can see in there that's being produced, the white smoke, is sodium oxide. So we're now going to have a look at some steel wool and have a look to see how steel wool, wool burns in oxygen. This is some steel wool. We've seen it burning in air. Uh, and just to remind you what it looks like when it burns in air. Just put this into flame. You can see how it sparkles and it does burn a little bit. So now let's try some steel wool and we're just this time going to plunge it into some oxygen. So here's the st same steel wool and we're going to get it burning and then drop it into the oxygen and see what happens. So there it is glowing and put it into the oxygen. And we can see very, very bright, really, really hot in there. Really hot indeed. 